I wanted to thank everyone so much for such positive feedback on the first episode in this series, and I would like to welcome my friend Laura Novotny for the second episode or second installment of Gym Girl Chat. So welcome to the podcast, Laura. Thanks, Sue. I am so happy to be here and be a part of this Gym Girl Chats. I'm so here for it. And next time we're doing it in person. Oh, I will (laughs) hold you to that. But I was literally just thinking of how long your hair freaking looks, especially knowing of like how recently or how short it was not too long ago. I know. And can I tell you a secret too? Only the back half is like straight. Only this part's curled. Because <laughs> I was like, that's the only part that's going to show. The only so part why would I? Gonna see. Why would I do the other part? Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. I don't even know what the back of my hair looks like right now. Because I was like, I'm only going to be on front camera today. I'm not going out in public. (laughs) Exactly. And that is a gym girl hack altogether, honestly. A gym girl hack, 100%. (laughs) Only do the front half of (laughs) it. But I also know something else you've been doing for your hair is you've been using the heatless curls. Do you feel like that's been something that's really allowed your hair to grow and be in a better spot? Yeah. If I want to do my hair, which isn't often, but if I feel like I have to do my hair for something, I do the heatless curls. And then I feel, I mean, you're not using heat, right? So it makes it like when you use heat, you can literally feel your like hair burning off when you're doing it. So, um, I think that's made a huge difference and also not dying it. I was bleaching my hair like a ton and that's obviously not good for your hair. So I haven't dyed my hair in like probably seven months. So that made a huge difference too. Yeah. I'm kind of starting-ish on that journey. So I will say for heatless curls, I did get like a thing and then I did it once and they didn't look good and I have not revisited it, which I just need to do and suck it up. If it's going to look bad, it's going to look bad. That's the thing of like when I'm trying new things, I always want to wait to use it for something because I'm like, I don't want to like do my hair and then just be sitting at home. But then I will put all of my eggs in a basket of like, I've never tried this makeup or I've never tried this hairstyle before. And then it's right before something that I'm going to either be on camera or go to something. I'm like, I'm just going to be ugly today. That's just going to be it. And I just need to accept of it might look bad, but I should just do it even if it feels like I'm wasting a good hair day. Well, and there are like so many different ways to do the heatless curls. You got to figure out what's best for your hair. Like you can do heatless curls like just right here, or you can do like one down the middle, or you can do two. Like there's so many different variations to do it. Like I did the one where you just do it here and like you look like George Washington Mm -hmm. and roll it back this way. And I looked absolutely ridiculous. (laughs) So then I figured out, okay, let's try it a different wall. And then also like if you're a side sleeper, Mm -hmm. that didn't work well because then like it's right here and you can't sleep well. Um, So then I do like the unicorn one that's like just straight down the middle and that one works the best for me. So you got to try different methods too because one method might not be right for you. I need to just suck it up. But I am kind of kind of going back to like my natural hair color slash dyeing it less because it was like... I want to say like six months ago, I went like very blonde and I I didn't necessarily even intend to go that blonde. I just was like, I want it lighter. And then it ended up like so blonde and I literally like felt my hair quality decrease so much. And so I've kind of been internally debating of, am I okay with having like more brown hair? Because my natural hair is my roots. Like I haven't dyed my roots in a long time. But like, what does that look like? Because I have been blonde for a long time and trying to navigate through that. But you know, we'll figure it out. I'm the same. And like Mia is obviously super blonde. So so I feel like I want to be blonde. So people like know (laughs) that she's my daughter. So I'm like, I want to be blonde. (laughs) But then it's so bad for my hair. But I also truly feel in my soul that blondes have more fun. I just think it's a thing. <laughs> I'll fight that till I die. Mm-hmm. So like I I feel like I have more fun when I'm blonde too. So <laughs> just feel lighter. I might have to go back to being blonde. I don't know. We'll see. I know. <laughs> Should we just like bring back sun in? Like, is that still bad for oh, your wait, hair? I- actually. <laughs> I don't even know. (laughs) You know what I also could do is like get a wig and then just wear that one. I feel like having lots of fun. I don't Mm -hmm. know. Alex could probably get you some info on where to get a wig. (laughs) Did you see his Deb skits? Yes. Oh, my gosh. That was hilarious. I have literally – I have like the biggest roadblock. Like I – it was funny because I was even talking to Alex about like, what color should I dye my hair? And he's like, hasn't it just been like blonde this whole time? And I was like, how dare you? It's been so many different shades of blonde, so many different renditions of blonde. It hasn't just been the same blonde all along. Uh, But it was when he got the wig, I was like, you know, I've toyed with maybe going dark or maybe going like like copper. And so I like put on the wig and I've also toyed with bangs. Uh, It has bangs on the wig. And I was like, maybe this is going to be it. And I was like, this looks absolutely horrible on me. So so um, I feel like that's actually really 
clever is to just, you know, you could buy a wig and then see if you like it. If you like it, then just pull the trigger and do that with your hair. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> do you have, do you, you sweat when you work out, correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> so when you sweat, when, cause you train in the morning, what do you do for your hair as the day goes on? Oh, you blow dry to sweat. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. A lot of people do that, but I know some people are like weird about it, but I'm like, I would do that if I got sweaty. No, cause I have the Dyson air wrap. So then oh, yeah, I like blow perfect. it out and then I give myself a blowout with the sweat. Yeah. Kind of sounds gross, but it works great. You know. I, and when I was working in my corporate job, um, I did that thing, like, cause I would work out first thing in the morning. And sometimes I would go during lunch when I was like doing cardio during lunch or whatever. Um, so then like I would quickly shower, but obviously wouldn't have time to wash my hair. So I'd blow dry my sweat and go back to work. No one even knew I worked out. Yeah. I mean, it's genius. And I had like a little blush, but it wasn't really blush. It was just <laughs> a little flush from working out. Exactly. I mean, these are all <laughs> the hacks people need to know when it comes to their day to day. But what does your workout split look like right now? I am doing like a push pull legs and then I do some cardio in there. So I usually like to do like one Peloton ride a week and then sometimes one run a week. And then I walk every day. Um, and I have been rocking recently. Have you ever read the book Outlive? I have not. Oh, so put that on your list. Okay. I you will. You got to write it down because <laughs> it is incredible. Like one of the best books I've ever read. Um, and Tommy read it. We got all of our parents reading it, which is so great because it's literally about like longevity and how to live longer. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the book, he talks about rucking. And I was like, well, I go on a walk every single day with the kids pushing the stroller. It's not anything, you know, hard to add a back, a weighted backpack on. Um, so I've been doing that too whenever I remember. But <laughs> um, so yeah, right now it's typically push pull legs and then a day of the Peloton bike maybe a day of running and then walking every day. Yeah, I was talking, Alex and I were chatting a little bit about the aspect that as of right now, because I, I go on walks every single day and I train, I mean, right now it's like two to three times a week, but ideally four times a week. Even if I'm training hard, I'm not getting my heart rate up with that. Mm -hmm. And that's something also within a lot of our clients, they're working at a desk or working at home where they're not moving around a lot. And if you never get your heart rate elevated to a certain amount, you're never like testing that aspect of your heart, then that can mm -hmm. really put a damper not only on how your physique looks, but then also how your body functions. And that's a big thing also within longevity. And I feel like a big reason people really push the rocks is like, that's a great way to be able to get your heart rate up while you're still doing something a little bit less intense. So if someone feels like they can't recover for something like maybe a cycling class or something more intense like running, then being able to do something like the ruck just allows their heart rate to elevate there. Yeah. And also, like if you're pushing a stroller, I mean, like with me on Finley in it and the stroller itself, I'm and if you go up hills too with a rucking or, or with a backpack, oh my gosh, it's so hard. So I'm like pushing a 50 pound stroller up a hill, have a 20 to 30 pound weighted backpack on. <laughs> like people for sure think I'm crazy because I'm like, get to the top of the hill. I'm like, <gasps> like, like truly just out of breath. And then even going down the hill, I think going down is arguably harder. And in the book, he talks about like how, you know, it's great for older people to do this. So mm -hmm. that's why we told our parents about it. Um, because if they have a weighted backpack on and they're going down a hill, that's a way for them to test like um, like one of the most common injuries in older people is when they fall, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a way for them to build that strength of like um, going down a hill and like getting used to like stepping off a curb when they're 80. So they test that when they're rocking with a weighted, you know, backpack, vest, whatever on. Um, and it's so hard when you're going down a hill, especially like if I have a 50 pound stroller pulling me down the hill, I'm trying to stay upright. I have the backpack on. It's like, you can just feel that everything is like working so hard when you're doing it. So we got, I got my dad rucking now. He's going out on like eight mile rucks. It's I like incredible. That. Oh my gosh. What is he doing on these eight mile rucks? Like, is he listening to listening music to podcasts. or podcasts? Yeah, I don't really know. Eight Oh my gosh, eight miles. How long would that even take me to walk? That seems like a I lot know. to walk. <laughs> I know. Uh, but he's also retired and, you know, doesn't really yeah. have much going on. So do he can do it. Do you truly just throw like the weights from your gym into your backpack? I see you doing that. No. <laughs> Come on, Sue. <laughs> I, I see that for you. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong because that is a thought that crossed my mind. But no, because we have those like massive, like our 10 pound ones oh, are yeah, like yeah. huge you have the bumper rubber plates. ones. 
Yeah. So I like bought an actual backpack from Go Ruck. I think that's the name of the company. And then they have weights that like fit into mm-hmm. the backpack. So they're like a little square rectangle or <laughs> goodbye, Laura. A square a rectangle. rectangle weight. <laughs> um, that like slides right into the backpack. Okay. But then I have thought like if I want to add like, you know, five more pounds or something, because we have like small five pound metal plates, then I could mm-hmm. do that. But yeah. Do you, yeah. do you ever hurt your shoulders? Cause like Alex has a ruck vest from Rogue and it's something where like the shoulder is just like one strap. And that's the thing that kills me is like, it's not even like the weight is too heavy. It's like, it's digging into like my trap and my shoulders. Yeah. That's how Tommy, cause Tommy has a vest and he feels that way. Um, but I like the backpack that I got, I don't, I okay. never have, that's, like, well, he has a vest, shoulder. so that's it might be just the vest causing yeah, that. Yeah, maybe it's the vest. Because then Tommy took the front weight out of the vest, and now he just has the weight in the back, and he said he doesn't hurt his shoulders anymore. So oh. maybe it's a vest situation. Life hack. Okay, Tommy, thanks for doing some R&D yeah. for us. Like, we're all, I'm about to figure <laughs> that out. Uh, <laughs> but for working out, I know you said you do push-pull legs, and then I already mentioned that you train in the morning. But I also know, and anyone who does follow you, that uh, when you are training in the morning, then both your kids, which you've mentioned. So if someone doesn't know, Laura, how old are both uh, Mia and Finley? Um, Mia's two and a half, and Finley just turned one, like, a week or two ago. Yes, and so. had a very low-key birthday party. <laughs> we just had a cow and a few goats. You know, we just had lovely. like a whole animal farm there, but like it was super low-key. <laughs> yeah, Tommy will never let me live that down. I loved when you he- shared the picture afterwards and you see the goats all got all the grass in the circle. <laughs> and you know yeah, Tommy and was not happy about that. our yard that Winston then ate, so that was great. Classic. Classic. <laughs> yeah, I think Tommy's realized I'm just, I mean, he should have known by now I'm yeah. not a low-key mom and I never will be. So <laughs> that's just something, if I tell him it's going to be low-key, he knows it's Just not expect be. it to not be. But yeah. obviously with having those ages of kids and then if someone does follow you, they see that they are normally down in the basement working out or in there with you. So what does that look like within still prioritizing you and your results and or just your health while having Let's say just, I mean, it is a distraction to have them down there. I know it's still fun and enjoyable, but it's also still a distraction as you're going through things. So how do you either mentally go through that or what do you do in those situations? Yeah, so it's helpful because Tommy and I work out at the same time typically. So um, if Mia or Finley or both are down there um, during one of our sets, we'll grab Finley during the other set, I'll grab Finley, like we'll switch off because Mia typically is fine. She usually has blueberries and milk and she just hangs out and drinks her milk and eats her blueberries so she usually just like sits there and watches us finley's the one that's like crawling around you know where it could be um like harmful to him Mm -hmm. if something were to happen if he were to get too close so when tommy's doing his set i'll hold finley when i'm doing my set he'll hold finley um but then times where like tommy's traveling for work and i have both kids by myself then i tend to bring out like things they never see so like cards against humanity and then they play with the cards like literally anything to just like have them over there while I can do my set Mia's learned by now um that she can't be by me when I'm doing like squats deadlifts you know like anything that could harm her um but Finley is the one that I have to be a little more cautious of but that's when I bring out the tools that (laughs) are saved for just those times that he's like "Ooh, this is something new (laughs) so it doesn't have to be a new toy it can be like a toilet paper roll because those <laughs> things they'll get more excited about and want to play with longer. So yeah. you got to whip you know, an empty box, you know, all these yeah. different things that the toys yeah. come in, but <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> How yeah. do you navigate within? Like I know moms that I'll talk to will say that it is hard for them because they're trying to focus on themselves. And then it feels like I mentioned earlier of just distracting, having them there. And I know you said, if you try to distract them with other things, but how do you navigate in those times where it's just like, oh my gosh, I was just trying to have a few minutes or an hour to myself and then they're getting into everything and they're wanting to do something how do you navigate through that mentally yeah I think I just try to remind myself like I grew up watching my mom work out I grew up working out with her you know like having fun with it and doing something's better than nothing in those situations so even if I have to grab Finley and use him as my weight then it's better than going upstairs and throwing in the towel you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so although it's like frustrating at times and you just want to get a workout in and you know it's not how you intended things to go that's just kind of how motherhood is and the kids are in control and you can't really do anything about it sometimes 
Um, so I think just remembering that they're just little kids and they're just, you know, they need you sometimes. And maybe it's a time when you don't want them to need you, but you just got to deal with it. That's part of being a mom. And just know that like one day isn't going to ruin everything. Tomorrow, maybe you can switch things up and do a workout during their nap instead so that you can get in like full uninterrupted time. Um, but I don't know. I just try to like remember that doing something is better than nothing at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing I've loved seeing throughout your story is just being able to see when they are all crawling around. And in my mind, I might be like, oh my gosh, that would be frustrating. But then I also see the moments where like you see them picking up on the tendencies that you're doing or like Mia asking to do a pull up or asking to do different things. And I feel like you have such a good mentality about that of just being able to say, hey, something is better than nothing. And I'm also, even though this is like my lifestyle and maybe my time for myself, I'm also trying to create this lifestyle for my kids. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I feel like you do an incredible job of pushing forward is just involving them when you can, letting them be a part of it, even if it's not ideal for you, of just being able to let them be there. Because I think, I mean, like what they see, they end up doing. And that's such a huge part of childhood. And I think that's so important and special. I was just going to say that too, like, I think a, a thing that a lot of moms forget, and not only moms, but dads too, just parents in general forget, like on a day-to-day -day basis, just because you're so wrapped up in doing daily things. And it's, you know, feeding your kids, whatever, um, you forget that you're creating your kid's childhood mm -hmm. every single day. You're literally creating your child's childhood and how you want that to end up is totally up to you. Like I remember my childhood was so like things that I remember were like watching my mom do Pilates, playing in the sandbox, little things like that. So it's like, try not to get wrapped up in the little things that might not go how you intended. And just always remember you're, you're creating your kid's childhood every day. And I want our kids to grow up with, um, I like, I don't want Mia I, and Finley to do things just because we enjoy doing them, but I want them to, um, see, you know, different things that they can be a part of, whether that's golfing with us, whether that's working out, whether it's running, you know, like I want to expose them to so many different things so they can choose what they want to do when they're older. Um, so I think it's just always keep that in the back of your mind as like a mom or a parent um, is just every day you're creating your child's childhood. So don't lose sight of that and get wrapped up in the little stuff. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible. You for should you. lift heavy. High reps, Carbs low are weight, needed. Keto squats are bad for your Squats knees. are great. You for should your knees. squat knees after toes. It's fine. It fits my macros. For idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one on one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. I absolutely love that. And I feel like not only within the movement that you and Tommy do, but then also when it comes to how you guys navigate through food and like family time with food is very important. So what does food look like for you right now when it comes to day to day? I know that you um, were going through a time within Lent. I'm going to apologize because I don't know when Lent exactly is. Uh, so <laughs> if it's ended or not, that you were not doing processed foods for that. But what does like a general day of eating look like for you? Yeah. Um, I am so big. I have like, honestly, since COVID kind of developed a love for cooking and baking. So I make like 99.9% .9 of the meals for our family. And it's not like, it's something I truly enjoy doing. Um, so and in it the is morning the best to be a visitor in the house as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know I wish I could ship some superhero oh, muffins some too. Sourdough bread. As well. Sourdough. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> um, yeah, so in the morning before a workout, I have my protein coffee. I've been doing that since 2017. <laughs> Probably I'll never stop. I'll be 80 years old still mixing like, up my protein I'm coffee. I'm carrying around my frother with me in the nursing home. <laughs> and they'll have it like built into your walker. Me, I'll be frothing people's coffee in the nursing home. Everybody come, let's make a yeah. coffee. No, um, so I usually 
usually have like my protein coffee and then typically I like to have a superhero muffin, but I've been real lazy recently and haven't made them in a while. So I've been having just like a banana with peanut butter and flaxseed. And that's my little pre-workout. And then I sit my coffee during my workout. I don't, cause I get that question a lot. It's like, do you drink your coffee that fast that you make it? And then and I'm like, no, I just like sip it during my workout. That's the best part about working out from home is you can just, you I can know. do that stuff. I love wearing slippers at home, having yeah. my coffee, whatever I want to do. It's just, it's great. I'm there. Doesn't, no one's judging you. Yeah. Um, well, Tommy might be, but he's <laughs> yeah, not saying Alex anything. Alex definitely is, but like, yeah. who cares? <laughs> whatever. Um, so that's what I have before a workout. After workout, I have like a big breakfast with the kids. Um, Typically like sourdough avocado toast, eggs with some veggies, and then some like blueberries, blackberries, a little fruit that the kids have. Um, and then they usually have so, like kind of the same thing as me. And then for lunch, I always, we try and prep our food on Sundays for the week. That just makes it easier for Tommy going to the office. And then like for our nanny, when she's getting food ready for the kids. And then for me, when I run up and get lunch, I can just like throw it all together and heat it up. Um, so typically like a carb, rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, and then some type of protein, turkey, chicken, beef, and then a veggie, heat that up. And then I love my toppings. Toppings mm -hmm. are what make things so much better. So 100%. I usually add like, probably get judge for this, but sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut so much. Oh my gosh. It's so good. So good for you too. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so. sauerkraut. And then I usually put like avocado, feta cheese, olive oil. Those are like my my top four favorite toppings. Um, and then, oh, I usually have a morning snack too. I forgot about that. Usually like string cheese, beef stick. Then I usually have an afternoon snack, which is like yogurt, granola, fruit. And then dinner is whatever I feel like making. I get a lot of like inspiration from Half-Baked Harvest or um, I don't know. I just find like random recipes she online. She go, honestly. And it, it it's just like, how do you come up with so many recipes? I don't. Me? No, half baked harvest. Oh, I was like, I don't. I can move some of that. Else. Half baked harvest. I'm just like, so oh, many are bangers, and there and are so many. I think she's like 29, yeah, or 30. She's yeah. like literally my age. I'm like, girl, how do you do this? I, know. I don't know how she gets the inspiration for that. Insane, but they're all so good. And the one that you made, the uh, coconut curry, is that what it was? Oh yeah, that, that wasn't one? from hers. Okay, no. well that was that really one. good. But. Yeah, that one looks good. But she, I just found a new recipe by her on her blog. It's not in one of the cookbooks it's on her blog. It's called Marry Me Chicken Meatballs. I literally we, saved that when you posted it. Yeah. I haven't made it yet, but I have it saved from when so, you posted it. <laughs> it is so good. And the kids love it. Oh. And when you're a parent and you find a recipe that your kids love, you make it all the time mm -hmm. because it's not easy finding <laughs> recipes they love, both of them. So yeah, we've been hammering that. We actually just had it. Sunday and Monday. So yeah. <laughs> well, it is on my list to make for sure. Um, and I always love hearing about people's favorite snicky snacks because I'm a big snack person. So what are your favorite snacks right now um, or go-to snacks? Oh, huh, let's see. Snacks. I know you're the snack queen and I always get inspo from you when you come to visit us. We'll we'll be driving up to a Packer game and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. Sue's so like, what do you want? I'm like, you I, whole you, I mean, you have 20 <laughs> options. I'm like, this is incredible. Um, so I've got a lot of inspo from you on the snacks, but um, the, I'm forgetting that midday squares, mm -hmm. you got me on those and I still love them to do this day. Do you still have to hide them from Mia? Uh, I've gotten smart where I have, because they're like my nighttime mm -hmm. cap snack. So I have it like before bed as a little chocolate treat. So she's already in bed by that point. Perfect. Um. <laughs> But Mia okay, other snacks. Let's see. Usually, what'd you say? It was like Mama Bar, Mama Bar, <laughs> Mama Bar. <laughs> yeah. Um. So like string cheese beef stick, love that. Is like a combo of a snack with some nuts sometimes. Um, the purely Elizabeth granola mm, is so yes. good. Yeah, that stuff's the best. Um, go macro bars are really good. Mm -hmm. I have those here and there. Um, let's see what other snacks. Oh, you got me in those Nugo bars. I still eat those mm -hmm. here and there. Yes. Yep. Um, hmm. Oh, superhero muffins. I have those as a snack. The protein balls. Oh. Oh, those so, have been on repeat recently for us. Like they are so good. Yeah. We'll go through like a, a few, like a month where we're eating them every day. And then I just get lazy and don't make them for a while, which is the current state right now. But 
now that I said it, I might go up and make them after this because those are so good. I know. I We went to Cincinnati this weekend and I was like, I'm not bringing like food food, but I brought like some um, Chobani yogurt shakes and I brought some Midday Squares, some Nash bars. And then I was like, I'm of course bringing the protein balls too. And I got yes. one out in the hotel room and I like took one and then Alex was like, give me one of those. And I gave him one and then I like closed it and put it back in the fridge. And he goes, it's really funny that you thought I was only going to eat one. I was like, <laughs> Trust. I knew you were going to have more than one, but I didn't want to just stand here holding the container in front of <laughs> you. Like, you. Yeah. yeah, I was going <laughs> to wait for you to finish and then wait for you to ask me to get you another one. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, they're so good and so addicting. Um, and Mia loves those too. But yeah, those are I my snacks. I don't know. I'm kind of boring, Sue. I, I think I got to hang out with you more because whenever you're here, my snack level is way up here. So I know I'm all about the snacks. I love it. I literally I was telling Bailey last week that I made a loom for 2023 reviewing all the snacks I tried and it was like over 60 snacks and the looms like 40 <laughs> minutes long. And at first I was like, this will just be like a quick like 15 minute loom. And I get to the end. I'm like, that's 40 minutes just talking through <laughs> 60 different snacks. But, That's actually impressive. You know, snacks are uh, it's great. It's nice to have you as a friend, though, because if I am ever, like, sick of my snacks, I know I can shoot you text and be like, oh, for sure. all right, Sue, I need some new snacks. You'll have a whole list for me. Yes, and it's my favorite when people are, like, either I'm with them or, like, they're with me because then I can just be like, here, try it because I know it can be hard of, like, oh, I don't know if I want to, like, try this thing. I don't know if I'm going to love it. I don't want to buy, like, a whole box of it. So I love when I can just, like, give someone one and be like, try this, and it's going to be good. That's literally what you did to us yes. when you were here. Yeah. <laughs> I Literally, I was packing stuff and, like, counting out how many we needed, and I was like, I got to put in some extra for Tommy, some extra for Laura, <laughs> throw them in there, make sure they're all set to go. <laughs> yeah, and we took full advantage of that, so we <laughs> appreciate so. it. <laughs> uh, but kind of going back to workouts and just talking about music in general, um, I mean, you just recently met one of your idols. How did that go? So I still think about it daily. Like Tommy the other day was like, Laura, do you realize we actually met Luke Combs? I'm like, I know. How like, did that? Did was, you guys okay, have like meet like and greet or was it like it happened in the moment or what happened? No. Well, so a girl that I am friends with from college works for his production company. So she wow, got bless. us the meet and greet. I know. And I didn't realize that like people can't just buy Luke Holmes meet and greets. Like they used to be able to, but now he's like too big that the only way you can meet him is like if you know someone. So I'm like wow. so grateful that she did that for me because Shout out. I know, like I still can't believe to this day that I met him. So, um, but when I say it as a meet and greet, it's like you walk up, say hi, shake his hand, mm -hmm. take a picture, leave. You know, yes. it's not like a <laughs> hang out. Like, yeah. let me tell you that I post about you every single day <laughs> yeah. and I have this I whole like foot tapping tell... thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time to tell him I have his Luke Combs signature Crocs. Like, I, you know, that's stuff I wanted <laughs> to let him really know. All the really important like... stuff so that he knew that you guys would be friends. Exactly. But didn't have the time for that. So unfortunately, whatever. But still met him. It was incredible. And then the concert itself, we were like in the pit. Mm hmm. Which let me just say, the pit is not for the week. Like, I was <laughs> not expecting it to be Bro. what it was. Um, but it was incredible. It, I mean, it was so, I yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's what I struggle with with concerts is, like, I love live music, but I hate – I don't like arena concerts because then it's, like – you you're sitting so far back you can't see anything but then if you're in the pit like I don't want people touching me type yeah. of thing yeah. and so we went to a concert a year or two ago and we were like we're never going to go to a concert without seats again that like we have like space in and then now I'm looking at a concert that we're going to be in a pit so you know I just <laughs> you win some you lose some <laughs> and there was a girl next to us that literally I think she was on Mars like she didn't even know where she was she didn't know who Luke Holmes was she was so gone and she was just like kept running into us and like uh, banging, up, spilling her beer. I'm like, oh, this is why I don't like the pit. But, you know, that's just part of it because it's like, what do you want? I mm -hmm. wanted to be close to Luke Holmes. Yes. I wanted to be right there. So whatever. I got a little beer spilled on me. It's fine. I would much rather have been close to him. But yeah. anyways, that is mainly what I listen to during my workouts, if that's what you were going to ask. Yes. <laughs> is that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, however, right now I'm big on – um a bar song tipsy. I think everyone, mm -hmm. that's like the song in the summer. Tommy and I keep saying, however, I have like a Shibuzi playlist. Not like, it's like a, when you listen to a song a lot, then Spotify recommends it uh, like a playlist. So it's that. And one of his songs, a tall one, 
I think that's what it's called. Have you heard that song? I don't think so. I might have. I'm like really bad with names of songs. Okay. It's like right up there with or maybe it's Tall Boy. It might be <laughs> whatever. I'll send you the name of the, the song after <laughs> by that same Shibuzi. It is so good. I have been blasting that song during my workouts. Like repeat, repeat, repeat. So anyways, if you need a new song during your lifts, recommend that one. I know. I was talking to, we were actually in a team meeting and we had everyone like say some of like their top three to five songs. And it was very interesting because everyone who is a part of Team PD has completely different music tastes and like, like some of us have some overlapping, but like it goes from like on the actual playlist and I made an actual playlist so like people could confuse their brains, but like it had Disney songs all the way to like hard metal. And so it was just like all over the place, all over the map. Um, we didn't have, I don't think anyone really suggested a country song. No one was a Swifty and suggested any Swifty songs. Um, but it was the aspect of, I talked about, I love listening to songs on repeat because then I don't have to focus on like making sure the song's good, changing the song, getting distracted with that and all that. And sometimes I get distracted and then I'm like, oh, I want to hear that part in the song again. So if it's on repeat, I'm like, it'll come back around. I'll hear it when it comes back. And there were people who were like, I can't imagine doing that. And now a few of them have come back around and been like, I tried it out and I loved it. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of the move. Yeah. Especially when you're running too. Oh my gosh. If a bad song comes on when you're running, you're like, and I, you're I'm like, I got to find, and walk now. yeah. And then you're yeah. like, I got to get my phone out. I got to skip it or I got yeah, to talk to Siri. To or I'm trying to, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. No, yeah, I so acted like well I just... knew what that would feel like when I was running, but. <laughs> Hey, you ran when we were here. I did. um, And I thought about running a half marathon, but I am, I did go, like I'm currently in um, like working with a neuromuscular therapist because like my hips were getting twisted. And I was like, I know if I just try to start running in general, I'm going to hurt myself. And so I was like, let me get some things figured out. So I'm in a much better place with that. And I am thinking of not like full sending of like, I'm going to do a big race, but just trying to be like, okay, maybe I'll just go for like three miles a week, whether that's split up to three one miles or three miles all at once. Just because again, that aspect of like my heart rate doesn't get elevated and I want to be able to work on that and it'll just be nice when the weather's nice. So I'm going to try and take advantage of it. Um, But yeah. Well, and I know we talked about that, the Packers Cellcom half marathon. This is the last year of it. Right. I what? Yeah. What? I know. My dad told me that. So it's next like, weekend soon. Honestly, so you, really upset. You still can do it next weekend. It's I think it's next weekend. It's literally like it was in our calendar until maybe a week or two ago because then I saw it and I was like, I'm depressed. I'm not doing that. Uh, but it was like Alex kept talking about the Columbus half marathon. I was like, we all agreed we were going to do the Green Bay one. And then he was like, you can do it. And then I'll do this one. And then I also like a lot of things in life were going on where I was like, I don't have the capacity to run right now. Like I'm just going to try and get through life as a whole. But that makes me like really I know. freaking sad. I am like 99% sure because my dad signed up for it and he's going to like run walk it. But he's like, yeah, I signed up because it's the last year of them doing it. I was like, why would they end that? It was like such a big That's hit. That's so devastating. Which speaking of Packers, we are like, I've gone to different stuff within um, like the horse racing and everything because I was in Kentucky oh, yeah. for a few years. But I was so sad because we didn't even think about going to the Derby this year. And then our friends literally met and got a picture with Devante. And I was like, I mean, just to go ahead and steal my dreams from me. And then we look they and then we're like, year, I know. And then where, and I was like, why didn't I think of that? We should have gone. So I think we're going to plan to go next year and, you know, casually run in. I want to go to the Derby. We should all go. Oh, my gosh. Let's. Wait, let's do it. Because Tommy's been twice. He went for his bachelor party and then he went like for someone else, like someone else's bachelor party or something. And I've never <laughs> gone. So I want to go. Oh, so per. we should all go. Okay. We're putting it in the calendar now. Okay. So in the calendar. Derby. At least we know when it is. Next year. Next year. And we'll meet, Derby. we'll meet our idols. We'll meet A-Rod. We'll meet freaking Devante. We'll, that we'll meet them all and it'll be incredible. Bakhtiar usually goes with yes, them. Yes. He was there yeah. this year um, as well. So it'll yeah. be a dream. Which speaking of, and AJ was with them. We have, AJ lives like in town and there have been multiple times where we have like just missed him at places. And also for AJ's birthday, it was like a few months ago, we missed 
Aaron Rodgers being in town in Dublin at like a bar that my sister is a member at. And like we saw, I was looking through the carousel and his first pick his like birthday. And it was literally like Pat McAfee, Aaron Rodgers, AJ Hawk, and all these other people we love. And I'm like, we were literally in that room like two no. nights before. Like, what no. is our life right now? I could have. And then Alex is like, well, what are you going to say when you meet them? And I was like, I have to think of something because I don't want it to just be of like, hey, I'm a fan. Take a picture. I like want to become friends with you. That was literally Tommy and I when we were going to meet Luke Holmes. We like thought so hard of what we're going to say to him and then realized like you don't even have time to say anything to him. It's just like shake his hand, take a picture. So... But I know with Aaron Rodgers, I feel like I would have to think at least a week of what I'm going to say to him. I know. Because I don't just want to like walk up to him and be like, can I get a picture? Or and just like, like I'm a huge fan. It's like, yeah. no. I, like, no, it's got to be original so he remembers I you. I know. I feel like I have something better to say with AJ just because like, you know, we're in the same city. I could, you know, make a, make a whiff off of that. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we have a year to figure it out. We'll see him at Derby next year and we will be all good for there. Okay. That sounds great. <laughs> are you listening? <laughs> are you listening to any podcasts right now? Um, the author of that book, The Drive, mm -hmm. has a podcast. Or is it The Drive? It's called The Drive. Oh. I'll live. His Outlive book is, is Outlive, the book. but the okay. podcast is called The Drive okay. by Peter Atia is his name. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. So I've been listening to that one. Um, otherwise, I just – I have my Bible in a year. So it's like every day it's um, different books of the Bible. So I listen to that every day too. But that's on – I think that is on podcast. I listen to it on a different app, but they do have it on just like the podcast store. But I – with like the kids, you know – screaming a lot throughout the day. <laughs> I'm someone that likes silence. So mm -hmm. I really don't listen to like that much outside of like when I'm working out or if I'm like driving in a car. Yeah. Otherwise, like throughout the day, it's pretty silent. I'm extremely similar. Alex always has like six different things, audio, like he will be listening slash watching a podcast, um, like watching something on his phone and like have something else going. And I'm like, I walk into his office and I'm like, I got to get out of here. I'm like, I just need it to be silent. So like really the only times I am listening to something or if I'm training or if I'm like on a walk or in my car. Um, yep. And so I don't always like listen to as many things. And he's talking about like 12 podcasts that he's listening to. And I'm like, I, I just can't keep up at all. Yeah. So that's Tommy 100%. <laughs> like he'll have like something on his iPad, something here, something there. I'm like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I just want to listen to nothing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what is one of your favorite habits or routines that you have in your life right now? Mm, I honestly daily walks for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's like if you're ever having a bad day or you're tired or just unmotivated, you get outside and get fresh air and move. You feel like a new person. Mm -hmm. I just tell – like if anyone wants to change their life in any way, I tell them to just get outside and go on walks every single day. Yeah. Literally if it's five minutes or if it's 30 minutes, just that's like yeah. how I reset myself is if I'm mm -hmm. in and it might not make it like, oh, I'm rainbows are streaming out of my eyes once I get back. But yeah. I, like I always am in a better mood when I get yeah. back from when I left. And it just is so nice. And I know you understand within being in Wisconsin, but like whether it's cold or it's sunny, like it still helps. And that was the thing over this past winter of um, I believe it was this past winter, the winter before was the first time that I like still went on a walk every single day where uh, a few winters ago, I let the weather deter me a lot. But I was like, I'm going to get good at layering. I'm going to have my system and I'm still going to go on a walk. And like, I still felt better every single day for getting outside again, even if it was five minutes or 30 minutes. Yeah. I never got back from a walk and said, wow, I feel worse. Like I always feel better when I get back. And yeah, there's in the winter, didn't matter. Negative 40 in Wisconsin. I would go out, go on a walk, come back. My eyelashes would have like icicles <laughs> on them. Frozen. <laughs> like actually my eyelashes would be, have icicles. And I like, I felt so much better. Mm -hmm. um, and with the kids, obviously I can't take them out in that weather, but they would be outside with me in like negative 10 degree weather. And we have a burly stroller. So it's like one of those strollers that you can connect to the back of the bike as well. So it has like a like full cover on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would put the cover on, have like four blankets in them, have them in their snowsuits, and we would be out there in like negative 10 degree weather and we're chucking through. And they like so, asked to go on the walks too is oh, the cool yeah. thing. Yeah. And that's the thing too. Like if you are someone that has kids and they are having a tantrum, they're having a hard day, the moment I step outside, 
with Mia or Finley, um, their mood is like, it's immediately better. It's crazy what nature can do for adults and kids, but kids, you see it like in a second, they get better. And it can even be as like something is like, Mia, look at that tree. Do you see how it's blowing in the wind? And then that, that diverts her from whatever the tantrum was about. And then she's like, Oh, the tree. And it's like, it's just crazy how something so simple as getting outside can just like make your whole day better. Yeah. And fresh air. Cause I used to be a big treadmill walker, especially because when I was like competing and stuff, then I had like certain cardio at a certain rate I needed to do. And so it was just the easiest to do on the treadmill. And then after my last season of competing, so it would have been in 2021 slash 2022, that's when I switched to like all outdoor walks. And it is like that like there's times where like even if I train in the morning like the movement feels good of course but I'm inside and I still like because sometimes I have to choose between training in the morning or going on my walk in the morning and then I have to like switch the walk but I normally prefer my walk in the morning because it really does like set the tone for the day and make me just feel so much better but that's like if I train in the morning, I will miss like just being out in the fresh air and just being able to have those few minutes um, to like breathe fresh air because I am inside so much. Um, that podcast I talked about, The Drive with Peter Atia, he had a guest on there that talked about how important morning sunlight exposure is and how it can help so much with your sleep. Um, and so what I have truly noticed a difference, not only myself, but the kids so much. If we get out first thing in the morning and it's like right when the sun is rising, like 10 a.m. too late, it has to be like the first morning sun and it hits your eyes. You don't want to wear sunglasses. It's got to be like hitting your eyeballs. Um, it makes such a difference and Mm -hmm. literally 10 minutes is all you need. And I've noticed such a difference with both myself and the kids sleeping. If we get outside first thing in the morning, it is absolutely huge. And I love when it starts to become that, that it's lighter later in the day, because that's the thing of like, I do try to go on like a morning walk and an evening walk. Mm -hmm. And then in the winter, it's like, okay, my evening walks at 2 PM. Like, how does that (laughs) work out? Um, but I love it. Like, it's also something that like Alex and I use to like connect and wind down at the end of the night is like, go on a walk just talk about our day, talk about things, and then being able to like come back and do whatever we need to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So getting fresh air, outside movement, and then Sue, you really got to get into rucking because that, would, that well, is something Now that, that I got get. some tips about the, yeah. I'll try the back weight first, but then yeah. I'll have you send me the link for your backpack and yeah. I might try that out depending on how the vest works uh, because I'm like all for it. It was just like, it was really hurting my, <laughs> my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. It's a great way to just like, get your heart rate up. Like, and that's for anyone. Like if you're someone that works in an office and you don't have time, like you had skipped your workout, whatever, if you, Tommy does this during, cause he works in an office, like he goes in at seven 15 and gets home at like 6 PM every day he goes on a walk and wears his weighted vest or whatever. Um, and it, I mean, that's just a great way to get your heart rate up in the middle of the day, get outside, get fresh air, get movement in and like make it harder movement than just like a, a normal walk. So yeah, I I swear by it. I'm excited to try out the, the new hack and then see what goes from there. Uh, but speaking of sleep, um, again, if someone doesn't follow, then they might not know that you've had some different sleep trials and tribulations with both kids, um, not only because of the age difference and what things are, but just kids being kids of not wanting to sleep at certain times. So how do you still prioritize your health or different things for yourself when sleep isn't like just fact of the matter, like, yeah, optimally would love to get seven to nine hours of sleep. But it's like, realistically, you have some nights where it's three hours to so some nights where it's four, like five might feel like a great night of sleep. So how do you still prioritize different things for yourself when sleep isn't the best? Yeah, um, I would say two main things on following a night where I didn't get good sleep. Um, a cardio not lifting. Lifting doesn't do it for me. I got to do cardio. So like whether that be running, biking, incline walking on a treadmill, whatever. Um, and then really prioritizing like blood sugar balance throughout the day. Those two things I always prioritize after a horrible night of sleep. And I notice a massive difference throughout the day, like my energy throughout the day, if I didn't work out and just like ate like crap. So, um, yeah, the following day I'll do cardio first thing in the morning, even though I'm so tired because I literally didn't sleep. I know that I'm going to feel better after sweating, getting my heart rate up. Um, 
And then just making sure I'm having protein at every single meal and like a significant amount. So those two things sig- like help so much with um, poor sleep, at least for me. I concur. I would say that they would help for basically anyone. Um, It just might need to vary what amount that someone does. But I think that those are great tips. And I think it's something that, again, it kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier of like something is better than nothing of not getting in your head of, okay, first, I didn't get a full night of sleep of like, okay, I got some sleep. That's better than no, no sleep. But then also the aspect of, okay, I might not be able to lift or I might not be able to do this, but there are still things I can control. I can still control what food I put in my mouth and what I prioritize within that and then how I take care of my body. And for you, that's moving and doing some cardio. So I love that you push those forward because like you can't like catch up on sleep. So to speak, so to speak, like there's not like this sleep bank that it's like, oh, I got bad sleep one night. I'm going to sleep extra. And that means I'm going to quote unquote catch up. You might feel less tired, of course, but you can't in general, like quote unquote, catch up on sleep that you've missed. And so it's really great just to be able to just take the next step forward of, okay, how can I make sure that my body feels the best that it can with less than ideal circumstances? Yeah. And another thing too, like knowing that my sleep is probably going to be broken up throughout the night, whether it be me or Finley waking up, um, I would say prioritizing like being able to fall asleep quickly. So for us, it's like, in or for me, instead of watching TV or being on my phone, reading a book is hands down the best thing to do because I can feel myself getting tired and Mm -hmm. also sitting in the sauna that has been helping us so much with sleep, both Tommy and myself. I think it's just, and if you don't have a sauna, like taking a warm bath or or warm shower so that, yeah, your core body temperature just is like dropped before you go to sleep. Um, that helps so much before, um, going to bed. And then I notice that I get like so much more restful, deep sleep. Um, even if I am woken up, I had like good sleep prior to being woken up because I've prioritized like sauna, not eating like right before bed and um, reading a book. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because again, it's something where what can you control of like you can't control necessarily if they wake up, you can control your actions the next day, but even just how you set yourself up for being able to have good sleep, which I think a lot of people, regardless of if they're moms or not, don't always take into account of like, how can I set up my environment or my routine to make sure that my sleep can be the highest quality uh, possible stuff like making sure like your room is clean, making sure your room is at a lower temperature, being able to keep dogs off the bed um, or pets off of the bed, being able to have your room super dark, uh, being able to make sure that your sheets are cleaned semi-regularly, like different stuff like that are just going to help you and put you in a better place, even if things can't be ideal. Control what you can control. A hundred percent. So what does it look like for you right now for the worst fitness trend that you've seen going around? Oh man. You know, I'm not much of a person that is big, like that sees trends even come by. I'm trying to think of something. (laughs) That's so funny because literally me and Bailey last time we're saying the same things. We're like, we don't even like pay attention to trends. We're just kind of yeah, like in our own world. Doing our own I don't pay attention to what people are doing. I feel like yeah. I've just paid attention to what my life is. So yeah. I, don't, I don't really even know. Which I think is a great lesson for people is just True. Freaking focus on yourself because it's yeah. so like I would say that's honestly one of like my top pieces of advice is like the more that you can just focus on yourself and what's going on. And that doesn't mean like, oh, that means I'm so selfish because I'm not thinking about other people. It's like I still think about other people. I still like have relationships with people. But at the end of the day, like I'm also just focusing on like what do I I need to get done instead of like, what is everyone else doing? Uh, Because then that's also where you get sidetracked. You start like having that shiny object syndrome. You start looking around and you lose focus on like what you need to get done. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I honestly, when I'm on social media, it's to post my own stuff and then look at like my main friends and then I get off. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really even know what the trends are right now. I'm not I'm not up with the times, I guess. Maybe that <laughs> means that I'm just getting old. Oh I don't my know. Gosh. I don't mind if it does mean. Um, yeah. But what would you say are some of your sourdough tips for all the okay. sourdough ladies out there? Oh, wow. All right. I would say number one, it's not as hard as people make it seem. That is like, <laughs> I was so intimidating, intimidated when I started. Um, 
I didn't think I could do it because there were so many people doing all these different things, but it's not as hard as it seems. That's the first tip. Second tip, don't give up if it doesn't work for you the first few times, because whoever you're getting the recipe from, if you're following someone's recipe or their tips, whatever, so many things impact sourdough. Like, well, this is going to make it seem like it's confusing, but it's it's not, I promise. Um, but like, if you're following someone that this is what I was doing, um, the person's recipe that I was following lives in Utah and they have a higher altitude than we do in Wisconsin. And that can impact rising of bread and just sourdough in general. So her recipe didn't work for me. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to give up. But then I followed someone else's recipe that lives in the Midwest and it worked perfectly. I'm like, Okay. So humidity can affect it. Dryness can affect it. Altitude can affect it. Um, just like temperature of your house. So don't give up if it doesn't work the first few times. The first time I made a loaf, it was literally this, this tall. Like it was like an inch or two tall. And I was so proud of myself that I actually like had something and it still tasted pretty good. It just didn't rise. Mm -hmm. And then when I followed someone else's recipe, it's like big, thick, beautiful Mm -hmm. sourdough. So I would say, yeah, just don't give up. Um, just because one person's recipe didn't work, try someone else's method, try someone else's, um, tips and tricks, and then, um, have fun with the discard. Like there are so many discard recipes. That's going to be my next question of what your favorite discard recipe was. Oh man, I have so many, but the one that I keep making is the sourdough chocolate chips. They are so good. And then we have chocolate chip pancakes that are really good. I have like two good recipes for that. And then there was this chocolate chip chunky banana bread sourdough mm. and it was phenomenal wow. like it's like all so my favorite good. things together yeah and <laughs> it's funny though because some of these discard recipes call for like a quarter cup of sourdough so like it's not even it's like literally so minuscule amount. like there's hardly any sourdough discard in there but they just call it a sourdough discard mm-hmm. recipe and it makes you feel like you're eating something a little bit healthier than just a regular taco chip cookie because it has sourdough in it when in reality it's like Come on, it's it's like you're <laughs> literally just eating a cookie. But, yeah, but anything whatever, that you has, can add sourdough to, I'm all for. <laughs> yeah, same. Absolutely. But yeah, I would say top favorite recipes are the chocolate chip one, the pancake one, and then the chocolate chunk banana bread thing. Wow, I love that. Can't wait for you to bake those all for me. <laughs> are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing? turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty. I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s, able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, Then I also wanted to ask about what your goals are right now. Oh, wow. Let's see. I would say um, being that I just stopped breastfeeding Finley, my main thing would be just like getting my hormones back in balance. I like literally since 20, since January of 2021 have been pregnant or breastfeeding every month, except last month. No. Yeah. Every month, except April of, yeah. Every month, except April of 2023. So, um, my hormones have just been like high, low, high, low, all over the place. Um, so I just want to get those leveled out and just really prioritize my hormones right now. I don't feel like they're in that bad of a place. I feel like um, but I also just stopped breastfeeding two months ago, but for just stopping breastfeeding, I feel like they're in a pretty good place. Um, so I would say that's my main thing. And then, um, I want to start like getting more into running. I think that's just with like summertime. It just starts, the weather is better. I like running in the summer more than like freezing cold temperatures. Um, and we can take the kids on runs too with the, the little like burly stroller, stroller we have. So yeah, I would say just like, getting my hormones in check and then, um, picking running back up more. 
What would you say to any mom that's listening right now that might be struggling with, and like, like you said, you've been pregnant or breastfeeding since uh, 2021 of like what that within having physique goals of like, you didn't mention a physique goal. And I think that's something where a lot of women struggle when they're going through either pregnancy or postpartum of not having those physique goals. So what would you tell to someone listening um, that might be struggling with that and kind of how you navigated through it? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know what it was, but after I had kids, I just like viewed my body in a whole different way that I didn't really, it's not that I didn't care about it, like care about what I looked like physically. It's just, I was more so focused on how I felt internally. And I think that um, right there will play out into how you look physically because how you feel like that, that all just comes full circle. Um, but I don't know. I just think the more you stress about it, the more you try and like achieve this physique after you just had a child, you grew that child for literally nine months. What women go through during pregnancy and postpartum, it's, it's crazy what your body goes through. Um, so you can't expect to bounce back in two months when you just grew a child for nine months. Like you can't, um, it's just not feasible. Our bodies weren't made to bounce back that way. That's why a lot of women don't have periods when they're breastfeeding because your body is like still trying to keep your child alive. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's literally keeping your child alive. Um, so I don't know. I would just say like, focus on setting other goals for yourself um, strength wise, whether that be like, maybe instead of fitting into size four jeans, I want to do 10 push ups. like just set other goals that you can work towards because those go hand in hand. And then maybe by doing that other goal, you'll end up achieving that other goal that you didn't want to say out loud, like fitting into your pre pregnancy jeans or something, you know? Um, so I don't know. I think, getting wrapped up in the physical part when that's something that's hard to control when you're so recently or like current pregnant or postpartum, um, will just dig you into a bad hole. Um, so just try setting other goals for yourself that aren't based around your body and just like, like the physical goals, whether maybe just like more strength goals. And how did you like navigate? I know you said like once you became a mother, you felt like you just viewed your body differently. But like, is that really at the core of it within like you going through things and seeing your body and maybe not having those specific goals If it was just like, I'm taking care of my kids and making sure that I'm in a good spot. And that's what you were able to just carry forward instead of worrying about it. Yeah. It's weird because like, Honestly, when I was younger, like I would say college years, um, I think I always had like an underlying fear to have kids because I didn't know. Um, and not even, yeah, I was college when I was competing. Like I, you know, when you compete, you can have a lot of bad body image, um, issues and I for sure had that. And so I think during that time I was so scared to ever get pregnant because I was like, man, I have these bad body issues now. Like I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when I'm pregnant postpartum, like that's going to be, you know, something really hard to get through. Um, but I never really had that. And I know not all people can say that. And I feel guilty saying that, but I, I truly think that once I went through pregnancy and postpartum, my whole viewpoint on my body changed. Like I, I just accepted it and like loved my body so much more after what it gave me that, um, I didn't have these negative thoughts on what my body looked like. And I, I think that I was like so scared going into pregnancy that I was going to deal with that. Um, so if you're someone that is like so scared thinking that that might happen, just know that it doesn't happen to everyone because I truly don't really have physical thoughts about my body. <laughs> like I, it, that's just not something that I really stress about anymore. And I honestly think it's just because like, I look at my kids, I'm like, wow, that like, my body literally gave me those. So, um, I don't know. It's just, I think it's like a, a big mindset shift that I went through that I didn't expect myself to go through. Yeah. That makes me so happy for you just cause I know 
I know some of just like within competing and what was going through within body image. And it's like once you compete, you have like a whole new standard of like what lean is. And it's hard to detach from that and recognize that like what you see as lean when you're competing is like way lean when you're talking about lifestyle and trying to break away from that. Um, But even just hearing you say of like, I don't have like thoughts about my body. It's like so cool to get to that point just because Mm -hmm. it's like you, you still so much focus on your health, you focus on these different things. And that honestly is what gives you like, if someone's listening to this and you don't know what Laura looks like, like go to her Instagram. Like she looks great. Like she's not like some blob. And she's like, I've just like, I don't care about any of that anymore. Like she takes care of her body. And I think that that is another big thing of like your body taking care of you back. Mm -hmm. And I think too, like having Mia, having a daughter, um, I don't want her to grow up seeing me like nitpicking everything Mm -hmm. about myself because the last thing Like I can't even, I don't even want to think about someday when, because it's inevitable that all girls do it, um, that she like, doesn't look, doesn't like how a certain part of her body looks, you know what I mean? And that I don't want to be the person that portrayed that onto her. So I think that alone, having a little girl, um, has helped me shift that whole mindset. You know, like she, um, I want her to grow up knowing that, um, taking care of your body with food, with movement, with sleep, with, you know, just like all of those things, um, is way healthier than, you know, some of these trends or some of these like horrible, you know, whatever things that people do to try. And, you know, it's not horrible because I mean, they're not good for you, but there are so many healthy ways to achieve, um, a physique you want. And I want her to grow up knowing that, knowing that she doesn't have to like absolutely torture herself or take these pills or do this or do that. Like I want her to see that you can just live a healthy lifestyle and that will show on the outside. Yeah. And I think that you do an incredible job of that. And (laughs) it leads me to the last question that I'll ask today is what inspired you or what was the driving force between behind creating Scenic Kids? Oh man. Okay. Let's see. So my daughter was, let's see, three months old and I was trying to find all these different like different um clothes for her ones that were soft one that ones that um were stretchy that lasted long I didn't want to be buying new pajamas every single month um so then I came across bamboo pjs and I was like wow these are incredible like they last so long they're so stretchy they um you know are so soft like I didn't have to worry about her overheating at night because it's like bamboo is like temperature regulating. Um, so I couldn't find a company that had everything I wanted though. Like I wanted double zippers where you can zip it from the top down or the bottom up for easy nighttime diaper changes. I wanted them to have fold over feet on their feet so they can have their toes covered or it's good for kids to be able to explore the ground. So I want their toes to be able to be out as well. Um, and then I wanted grips on the bottom. So when she started walking, if it was cold, she could have her toes covered, but not slip on wood floors. Um, and then I wanted like cute designs that weren't like, so I feel like so many kids designs are like, holy crap. Like it's Mm -hmm. like stimulating for me to look at. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted them to be like really soft and cute, but still like, I don't know, functional. Um, and I couldn't find that. So I was like, well, I'm just going to make my own. And I'm a person that like, am I'm always, I always want something more. Like if if I am stagnant, I got to challenge myself in some other way. So I had obviously been doing this whole fitness industry thing, social media for a while. And I was like, I need a new challenge. So then I was like, I'm going to start a baby pulling company. So that's what led me to start it. Um, and it's been so fun. Like it's such a, a fun thing. That's so challenging. Cause it's something I've never done before. I had to figure everything out on my own. Um, and then like, obviously my brother helps design them. My grandma designed one. Um, so yeah, it's been something fun to do that I didn't realize I would like as much as I have liked. So I'm glad. Um, and yeah, I, yeah, it's been so fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And I just love that it is also your brother involved and then most recently your grandma involved because uh, it just makes it so much more special as a whole that you also not only are you having like kids like night clothes that are going to be super functional, but then and you get to see the designs that it's like, oh, my brother drew that. But then you also get to see 
hundreds of people and their kids in those designs. And it's just special of like, oh my gosh, I made that come to life. Um, so I think it's so special. I loved hearing your story of how you came up with it because it is just so you of like, they didn't have it, so I just made it. Uh, yeah. and, <laughs> and just all of the like work that you put into everything that you do to be able to create something great and like to truly make something that wasn't around and filling like a gap in the marketplace, but also just doing it in such a great way. It just makes me excited and I can't wait to have all of them for my own in the future. Absolutely. You will get every single PR box I have as soon as you know it. Oh my gosh. Which funny story as we wrap up, I had ordered so like we mentioned that her grandma just did a design and it was sunflowers. And I was like, I need to order this because I know like even there's some designs on the site that are sold out and I don't want to miss out on it. And so, and sunflowers like hold a special spot part in my heart. Like sunflowers always remind me of my baby sister. It's something where like years ago I stumbled across like these hand painted Bibles and like the one that I was like, oh my gosh, I love that had sunflowers all over it. And the name of the Bible was the Savannah Bible, which is my sister's um, name. And then like even to like my tattoo of like having the flowers, like flowers have always reminded me of her. And when I saw the sunflowers, I was like, oh my gosh, I need it. And so I ordered one. And then Laura <laughs> sends me like all these texts. She's like, Sue, are you pregnant? Is this the way you're telling me? And it's like a cascade of texts. And I'm like trying to type to like respond to her, which disclaimer. I saw the bubbles popping up. I was like, you're not typing fast enough, Sue. Are you pregnant? Is this how you told me? <laughs> Hi, disclaimer, I'm not currently pregnant, but I was just trying to get prepared for everything. So now I have, you know, whenever that time's come, I have one baby onesie and then I have my baby wrap from Sully. Yes. And that's what I have right now. And you that's know all you need. from there I'll be I'll be good to go. I'll figure it well, out. And then too, you were like wait, that's kind of a good idea. That might be how I actually tell you that I'm pregnant. I was like, Sue, you better not. Like, you got to tell, you have to come up with a different oh way. But if, you, if that was the way that you told me you were pregnant, that's actually so funny. And I, I would love it. <laughs> It's so funny because I was talking to someone of like, I've found out a lot of my friends are pregnant, um, not by accident, but in situations where it's like, not that they weren't going to tell me, but it just like, I was there at a time where they're like, I just have to tell you because this is the situation. Like, that Des, was <laughs> yes. when I was pregnant with Finley. Is, you're yeah. pregnant with Finley and you're, you get in the car and you're like, by the way, I'm pregnant. And so like, if I throw well, up, that's why. <laughs> we're on our way to the Packer game. It's a two hour drive. I'm like, I have to, we have to tell them like. I I might get car sick. I might puke and I can't drink at the game. Like I'm not gonna get but it's we also are not people that yeah, like drink we, off I don't together. Think we've so ever it wouldn't be weird if I didn't drinks together. But. Yeah. So it wouldn't be weird if like I didn't get anything to drink. But the whole like I might throw up thing, I was like, I gotta tell her. So we get we're literally in the car, put our seatbelts on, I'm like, Oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. And you and Alex are like, what? We're like, come on. <laughs> I know. And it happened with the Des of her and Wyatt were visiting us and staying over at the house. And then we were going out to dinner and I'd like offered Des something and she said no. And then like, I like it was later that day and I offered something to her again. And she was like, no. And I didn't even think anything of it because I'm like, if you say no, like I'm just offering so you don't feel like you can't have something if you said no in the moment type of thing. And so I was like, I didn't even think about it. And then she was like, I got to tell you, I'm pregnant. I was like, what? It was like brand new, like very early in the pregnancy. And I was just like, wow, I just need to start like showing up right place, right time of being able yeah. to find out all these early pregnancies. But then I feel like I have like a fun secret. And I'm like, yeah. you guys don't even know. Like, well, I got to hold on. it in for like yeah, eight more weeks. So I know. <laughs> I know. That's my problem. I'm so bad with secrets because I'm just, well, I mean, it works because no, then I don't have. secrets though. Yeah. I, I, like guess I, I guess I am in regards of like, if I know it's supposed to be a secret, like I can keep it. And especially as long as I can tell like Alex or like he knows, then that makes it like way easier because then it's yeah. like, at least I have someone to talk about it with. Um, and then I'm all good from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, is there any question that I didn't ask that you wish that I would ask? Um... I always like knowing what, well, I guess you asked me my favorite snacks. I was going to say, I always like knowing what people's favorite meal is. You know, then what's your favorite meal right now? Well, I want to ask you. Um, my favorite meal is probably going to be breakfast. Your I've pancakes. had the same breakfast for three years straight. Your pancakes. <laughs> and it with... is the pancakes. Yes. Yeah, okay. with some hash browns and some bacon. I literally well, like every night before bed, I'm like, I'm so excited to eat hash browns and bacon in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then every time I sit down at breakfast, I take like a bite of hash browns. I'm like, oh. Our hash browns are so good. And Alex is like, this is day like 1000 of you saying this. Like, please shut up. 
<laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you the last time I had hash browns. Wow. I've never made them, I don't think. Yeah, I've only ever well, had them at a restaurant. If you ever come to visit us ever, I then know. I know. <laughs> Tommy and I are talking about it this summer. I know, but I like I very much so understand because obviously like with kids, that's why with all of our friends, we're like, we're willing to travel, whatever makes it easier. Because I know bringing kids, you would have to drive. Like, I know it's a whole thing. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, <laughs> but I will make food for you to return the favor um, when you do come. And I will make and you And I'll hash bring browns. you a loaf of sourdough, too. Oh, perfect. Uh, and then to Alex's request, will probably just be teach me how to make it. Um, yeah, like, that's right. <laughs> he is all for it. He's like, are you going to learn how to make sourdough anytime soon? I'm like, I, I'll work on it here. I'll, I'll get into my sourdough era. Don't you worry. The thing is the best time to start, I think is the summer because in the winter it takes way longer for bread to rise. In the summer, you can like knock out a loaf pretty quick because it rises way faster with the warm temperatures. So now would be a good time to start learning if you want to learn. Well, I'll take that into consideration. Uh, But (laughs) I will have your um, information as far as like your Instagram handle. And then also if anyone is wanting to buy some kids clothes, I'll have that in the show notes in the description. But is there anywhere else that people can find you or get things if you want to shout out your workouts, anything like that? Yeah, um, I would say mainly my Instagram. I gamble with TikTok here and there, but I'm not regular with it. Um, but yeah, my Instagram at Lori Julane. And then yeah, I have my workout subscription, Lift the Flora, um, home workouts, gym workouts, and then yeah, Sunny Kids, the baby clothing company. Um, that's about it. Perfect. Well, I'll have that all below. Thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait until the next episode when you do it in person. Uh, And I will um, probably see you here in the fall for a Packers game for sure. I love it. It was so nice chatting with you soon. Thank you so much. I miss you so much. Everyone go follow Laura. I literally recommend you to so many of my clients, especially if they are moms um, or I mean, even if you're not a mom, you should still follow because also (laughs) our kids are super cute and just it's a fun time over and Laura's story. It's for always sure. a fun time. It's, it's <laughs> chaos fun time here. Yes, but we love <laughs> it. So go follow Laura. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, Sue.